Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. Today we have Netflix 339th film from 2021. It's the British drama The Dig. This one is directed by Simon Stone and stars Carrie Mulligan, Ralph Fiennes, Lily James, Johnny Flynn, Ben Chaplin, Ken Stott, Archie Barnes and Monica Doolan. I am Jesse, and I am your host, as always. Thank you for joining me on this big adventure. There was a little bit of a giggle when I said 339th. It's almost at that stage where we go, hey, do we ditch the numbers and just do this show? Uh, because we are getting a long way into this Netflix catalog. And, uh, you know, I mean, we're not even halfway, I guess. <laughs> we're in 2024 as we record this, but it's it's, it's a wild ride. We're, we're still cruising along, so... As always, if uh, you haven't seen the film The Dig and you're keen on checking it out, give us a pause and come back a little bit later on because we will spoil this as we go. And we do that by starting off the show with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about. So this one, it's uh, this one, this is really bad. I'm sorry, but for me, this film is it's about a man who's hired by a widow to dig on her property. Um, there's no innuendo intended in there at all. That's what this film's about. This is a, um, you know, this is like an award sort of, um, film where it's like, you know, put the performances out, put the film out, period drama. That's where we're at because this is obviously based in and around, uh, prior to World War II in Britain. And we'll get to that as we talk about the film a little bit. And what better way than to segue into how this film ended up on Netflix? What can we find out about the film? So obviously translations around the world, there's a few different ones. So the English title is The Dig, D-I-G, because this is about an archaeology sort of site, uh, in Britain, in, uh, Spanish, Croatian, German, Greek, Hungarian. Polish, Russian, Czech, Turkish, Ukrainian, Vietnamese, and Portuguese. It's called The Excavation. (laughs) Yes, okay, that makes sense. Uh, In French, it's called The Site. Yes, that makes sense as well. In Chinese, this is where it's a little bit off. Uh, There's there's two translations. One is The Ancient Treasure. Um, I think the the actual dig, it's about like Anglo-Saxon sort of thing. So not quite ancient times, but we'll take it. Uh, The other translation was Archaeological Treasure Hunt. Again, not necessarily, not necessarily all about the treasure in this film. Uh, if we if we think about it, in Italian it's called the buried ship. Um, I've said this is a spoiler. Alert. Yes, they find a buried ship. So uh, if you're in Italy, you knew what this film was going to find before it started. In Japanese, it's called Traces of Time. I like that. I do like the Japanese titles. At times, they do sort of, uh, you know, they're a little bit more symbolic than than other films. And the last one in Arabic, it's called Excavation Site. So pretty straightforward there. The tagline for this film was, nothing stays lost forever. Not bad, not bad. Um, Yeah, (laughs) ties in with this film. Let's talk a little bit more. So this this is obviously, it's based on a novel, a historical novel from 2007 of the same name by the author John Preston, who reimagines, and I think that's a key word as we uh, sort of talk about this film, but he reimagines the events of the 1939 excavation of Sutton Hoo in Suffolk, England. So that's uh, what this story is based on. The project began back in 2006 when the producer, when the producer Ali Wood, read the manuscript of The Dig by John Preston ahead of the publication of the book in 2007. They optioned the novel in order to adapt it for the screen, and it was announced in September of 2018 that Nicole Kidman and Ralph Fiennes were in negotiations to star in the film. However, by August of 2019, Nicole Kidman had dropped out, no longer involved, because she had a schedule clash with another film. And that's where Carrie Mulligan was cast to replace her. The rights for the film. So if you watch this film, it does seem like this, but this was originally a BBC film. Uh, that makes sense. But Netflix picked up the rights then, and Lily James entered negotiations to join the cast in September of 2019. Principal photography began at Shackleford in Surrey in October of 2019. Norny Grange, um, stood in as Pretty, she's a character, the house at Sutton Hoo, with location filming taking place in Suffolk near the original Discovery site as well. The film's production team conducted research at the British Museum in Sutton Hoo at the archive and the gallery because that's where all of these things were actually found in the film in real life actually still stand. I'll probably talk about that again later. Uh, there was some underboarding filming and this took place at Pinewood Studios, which most people would know for some of the big films that uh, have been filmed there as well. The film did have a limited release 
the 15th of January 2021. Netflix then did release the film for streaming on the 29th of January 2021. The film was the third most watched title in its debut weekend and then finished seventh each of the following two weekends as well. The Times, a big uh, newspaper in Britain, Mark Bridge of the Times, noted that archaeologists had taken issue with the film's portrayal of the character Peggy Piggott. And we're going to talk a little bit about the characters later on. But they said in the film she was in, she was inexperienced and only hired because her light weight would not disturb the delicate sight. In fact, by 1939, Piggott was actually an experienced archaeologist in her own right and had studied archaeology at the University of Cambridge and the University of London. She's also presented as being married to an older, more experienced male archaeologist in the film, whereas in reality, Stuart Piggott, her husband, was only two years older than her, and they had met while both being students. The ages of other characters in the film were also changed from their real counterparts. Charles, Charles Phillips, who we'll talk about later on too, he was sort of like the head of the uh, British Museum. He was in his late 30s at the time of the dig, and in the film is played by Ken Stott, who is uh, he looks rather old. He's in his 60s, I think. Uh, Edith Pretty, she was also in her mid-50s and was initially intended to be portrayed by Nicole Kidman, who was around the same age, but then when Carrie Mulligan jumped in, um, obviously a lot younger, in her mid-30s. Bridge, uh, we're going back to the, the author of the article in The Times. He also criticised the, the, the addition of fictional character Rory Lomax, who in the film is the cousin of Carrie Mulligan's character um, in the film. But Rory, they introduced him as a love interest for Piggott, and the character um, is depicted as a photographer, Mercy Lack and Barbara Wagstaff, who are two teachers, and OGS Crawford, the archaeological officer of the Ordnance Survey, separately took a series of photographs. So it wasn't this uh, this cousin that we saw in the film. The two women were, oh sorry, the two women extensively photographed the site. They were excluded from the book and the film to create this romantic subplot, which we will talk about again later on. The ship, the actual burial of this uh, this site that they find this ship. It's thought to be of the King Raywald, who was the king from 560 to 624, although it's not certain. This actual discovery in real life is by far the most important Anglo-Saxon find that's ever been made, and the British Museum displays the finds, including a recreation of the famous helmet. The value of the finds has no actual value, um, not just in monetary terms, but in understanding the period. Little can be written about the Anglo-Saxons without referencing this actual find. So a really big, significant find that's actually, you know, the story's told in this film. Uh, the other sort of random thing, there is a short film called The Mound, which is a spoof of this film. I haven't been able to watch it, but super keen to check it out. So if you have seen it, let us, let us know. Uh, what else? So, uh, like I said before, this did have a limited theatrical run from the 14th of January 2021, filmed in and around the actual locations, mainly in Suffolk in England. It was nominated at the awards season this year for nine BAFTAs. That's a big amount of nominations. Didn't actually win any. It did have a further two nominations and two wins across the awards season as well. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? This is going to be interesting. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's at 87%. That's on 158 reviews. So, that is definitely fresh and also certified. The audience, a little bit lower, 78%. But that's on more than 1,000 ratings. So, a lot of a lot of ratings for this film compared to some of the international ones we have seen lately. Uh, IMDb sits at a 7.1 out of 10. That's pretty, pretty decent on 84,000 ratings. Letterboxd, similar sort of rating, 76,500 ratings, sits at a 3.3 out of 5, so very solid, but has been logged by 106,000 people. Lots of people saying this film. Uh, last one, Metacritic. Metacritic, traffic light system, red, green, yellow, green, obviously being good. This sits green for critics and audiences. Sits at a 73 out of 100 on 35 critic reviews, and the audience sits at a 6.8 out of 10 on 101 reviews. So green, 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 positives, positives, positives. What are my early thoughts for this one? Uh, I mean, the film, it looks pretty, um, I guess pardon the pun because of the character pretty in this film, but uh, it's performed well. It is slow though. I mean, uh, it's hard to make a film exciting when it's literally about people digging in someone's backyard. So uh, looks good, performed well, good themes, good ideas, but it is fairly slow. So that's where we're going to start off with this one. All right, let, let's talk about the characters in this film. So Edith pretty who we sort of mentioned before she's the owner of the land where this dig occurs and 
she has these hunches like uh, of where she wants to dig and and she sticks by her sort of morals and her ground we we know her husband's passed away and she's extremely ill and, and a very big uh, warrior constantly anxious and we find out she's always had this interest in archaeology, but her father didn't let her follow her dream to go on and study. And, and it seems like it's been a bit of a, a gender thing where her father was ill. She had to look after him until he passed away before she could get married. And, you know, she's got this child that she's got to look after too and, and is dealing with sickness and that idea that she possibly is going to die as well and her son's going to be left with no one. So that, that's where she sits. And she hires this guy, Basil Brown, who is a very determined man who knows his his worth and I think he's really interesting sort of character because he apparently has his reputation of, of being very unorthodox and a very difficult man but this is probably because he's very self-taught in in his ways and he's learned through his grandfather and his father and has no education and we know he's a hard worker who wants to see the best in the world and this idea I guess that he's married but but seems so distant and non-caring of his wife um, while she's almost dedicated to him always supporting him and, and and wants to see him succeed so i think it's a, a very interesting sort of character because there are glimpses of what could be with him and edith but i guess you know this isn't really needed because this story is about their connection as humans so i mean i guess it's nice that they didn't actually play it out further than it needed to be then we have peggy peggy piggott um <laughs> you know she's this jumps in in the back half of the film um works on site and i mentioned her before her real life character but you know she's hired because of her light frame uh, she's sweet um, yet constantly seen as very unhappy with her husband and I guess sort of uh, insinuated that he's not happy with her either because I don't think he necessarily likes females and and that's where we we get Rory uh, Rory rocks up who's Edith's cousin and he is literally in this film to take photos of the find and sort of provide this love interest for Peggy and, and also this other connection I guess of the background of World War II there because he gets called up and those sorts of things too. Robert's the other, Robert's either son, he, he's a sweet little character, uh, he's missing a, a male role model in his life and I guess his uncle Rory is there to sort of pop up every now and then and, and fill that need but he really latches on to Basil and sees him as a father-like figure. So a lot of the scenes I'll probably talk about that I enjoyed really revolve around this as well. The only other character I'll touch on is Charles Phillips. He's almost the villain of the film uh, because he wants to take the, the dig and the findings of this dig to the British Museum and, and he doesn't trust Basil because of his lack of education. So he's sort of that side character there to sort of make sure that, you know, that there's something negative happening, I guess. Uh, the director, Simon Stone, uh, interesting, interesting sort of little, not a lot of credits, but directed that 2015 film called The Daughter, as well as this segment in an Australian film called The Turning, which if you've seen it, it's a, like, and when the film came out, it was a big, big deal. It's like a collection of short films based on uh, Tim Winton, who's a very famous Australian author based on his novel. So um, interesting, interesting little catalog. Interested to see what else uh, Simon does as well. But let's talk about some scenes. We start off with the ones that I sort of enjoyed so I think there's a scene at the start where Edith tells her son Robert that you know we're, we're sitting at the table we're going to go see your dad today and I think this is almost before an audience we we understand that dad isn't around dad's dead and the the son Robert's literally like no nah, got no interest leaves the table because he says no nah, I'm needed here I want to stay on the dig with Basil and that sort of shows the connection that Basil's made with Robert so early on I thought that was good Basil's wife, she rocks up and I thought it was a really impactful sort of scene where the awkward tension that she creates in being there because this is that moment where we sort of see him kindling an interest with Edith and he's meant to go and have dinner with her and he can't anymore because his wife rocks up and we see the wife so kind and caring and we know that he's been ignoring her letters and oh, it was just so well done. I just thought that was really good. It's the scene where Basil decides to leave the site um, and Robert runs away to chase after him. It just showed how much of an impact Basil had on this young man as well. And finally, th this is again between Robert and Basil, where Robert's really upset when he sort of acknowledges how sick his mother Edith is. And he talks to Basil and he he's going on about how angry he is and knowing that his mum's sick and there's nothing that he can do. And Basil's like, you know, you do make her better and, and he cries and he says you know when his father passed away everyone said that he had to look after mum and he's like i failed and, and the commentary from uh, basil was great he's like robert we all fail every day there's some things that we can't succeed at no matter how hard we try 
Um, and he acknowledges, you know, Robert, I understand this is not what you want to hear, but you need to show your mum how strong you are. I thought that was a nice little scene, really good scene. Um, there's only one thing I didn't really like in this scene. Peggy, we, I don't know, I guess that whole storyline of Peggy sort of frustrated me a bit, but there's a scene where she's in the bath and her husband has a go at her for not locking the door and not caring about the idea that someone could walk in on her. It was very clear that she had no interest in him and needed and wanted something else. And I don't know, that scene just uh, didn't do anything for me. Anyway, themes, ideas. This, this film's saying a lot. What's, what's this film trying to say? There's there's lots about legacy and mortality and, and that idea that life is short. We see Edith sick and, you know, we know that Basil, his legacy, it's not going to be recognized. Um, we see that in the post credits as well, that it took so long for his work on this side to be, to be acknowledged. And especially during these times of uncertainty and death and war and, and, you know, Basil does this a lot really well, but we live through our actions because the past does speak. And, and that ties in a little bit to that idea of curiosity and knowledge and, and wanting to learn about the past, digging up the past, again, sorry the pun, but that, that idea of human existence and, and why did the people who buried this do it? I mean, the, the, the next generation need to know where they've come from and, and digging up the past can sometimes do that too because keeping things um, acknowledged and, and showing them to ensure that they're not lost is really important. You've got to seize that moment too. And and the final sort of thing, that, that idea of class and social barriers, we see Basil, he's self-taught and constantly looked down upon by society because of his working class background and his self-taught background, whereas Edith's the complete opposite. She's got the money, she's the haves, and he obviously is the have-nots. But we also see she's such a strong woman who stands her ground amongst what is an awful lot of men in this film. But I really like between those two characters of Basil and Edith, that idea of mutual respect almost between the classes. And I think that's why a lot of this film worked so well too. What did I take away from this one? I think, you know, the, there was this cool technique throughout the film that they used where there were visuals being shown with dialogue of the characters happening while we were watching visuals. And I thought it was good, but it was probably used a little bit too much. I think they went back to it a little bit too much. So that's, that's just a side little commentary from me on that one. Um, some questions, some ponderings, some ideas for this one. I think... And this, I've probably sort of shown my disdain through the, throughout the commentary on this, but the film transitions in the back half into this love story of Rory and Peggy. And I'm not sure, it's almost made it a different film because for me, it probably could have been more engaging to stay on the characters of, of Brown and Pretty, um, Basil and, and Edith. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be, it didn't need to be a love story between the two, but their their human connection was, was more interesting, I think, than that side story of, of Rory and Peggy that was thrown out. That's probably more a statement than anything else. Um, I, I also think this is, this is really good about talking about the importance to preserve history and, and art as well. That idea of learning from the past, I think that was really good too and the, like, World War II is in the background. It, it plays an important role, and we see in the post-credits that they dug this up just in time to hide it. I think it was in the, the London underground under the train stations to ensure that you know it wasn't destroyed during the, world, during the war. But the idea that you know if the war wasn't looming in the background, could this dig have turned out differently? Like maybe it wouldn't have been as rushed. Maybe I'm not sure. I'm just just intrigued that you know it had to happen at this such an important time in world history uh, as well. Anyway, I'm ready to wrap this one up. I've, I've probably spoken enough already. Uh, we do give the film a rating out of five on this show. I, and I've got to acknowledge this is done really well. Um, it does so much with such little dialogue almost too. And I think my only criticism is that addition of, of Peggy and Rory because it added this extra story that probably wasn't needed because we had such a good connection with Edith and Basil from so from so early on too. And I think it, you know, it wasn't needed because of that great connection. But anyway, it's a solid film. I'm giving it a three out of five. So three out of five for me. We're on socials. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, and we have X, formerly known as Twitter. The question that I wanted to put out there was have you dug up anything interesting in your life, in your garden, in your backyard? Uh, I know there's people that you know have dug up really random things. So I haven't, uh, to be honest. I think I've dug up maybe a, an old bottle. <laughs> That's about it. But has anyone got any interesting stories about something they may have dug up in their backyard or in their garden? Other than that, we are back next week. We do have an international film next week. It's from Spain. So it's um, the 2021 Spanish action thriller called Below Zero, or in Spanish it's Barreco, and it's uh, directed by Luis Cuelles and stars Javier Gutierrez, Cara Alajade, Luis Calejo, and Patrick Criado. Um, apologies for my pronunciations of those names, but I'll give it a better crack uh, when we actually do the episode next week. Looking forward to that one. Uh, hope you are too. Give it a watch. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next week.